A while back, someone left a comment under one of my videos where I described a method for lowering glucose levels with the help of your glucose meter. This person wrote, I keep telling you the focus needs to be on insulin sensitivity. It's like having an infection and only measuring the body temperature. Well, he sounded kind of grumpy. Today, I'll respond to that grumpy little comment and show why it's perfectly legitimate to focus on lowering your blood sugar if you're doing it the right way. So what about it? Am I wrong to emphasize lowering our blood sugar? Should I only talk about restoring insulin sensitivity? I don't think so. Now I get where this fella and people like him are coming from. Many doctors I respect talk about insulin resistance and they declare that this is the real problem. The high glucose numbers we're seeing on our meters are more of a symptom or a result, a consequence, rather than a cause. And I agree, those numbers don't suddenly appear out of nowhere and for no reason. In type 2 diabetics, they almost always indicate some measure of insulin resistance, and if we can fix the insulin resistance, the numbers will start to go down. However, I do not agree that high glucose is irrelevant and we should pay no attention to it, or we should not take any immediate steps to fix it. Some people are like glucose schmucose. Forget about your fasting blood sugar of 300 or 400. And just worry about insulin resistance. High glucose won't hurt you. It's the insulin resistance that will do you in. Well, I believe that thought is dead wrong. High glucose levels are incredibly toxic, whether you have high insulin, low insulin, or no insulin. And if you don't believe that, ask a type 1 diabetic. They don't have problems with high insulin, and many of them are not at all insulin resistant but their lack of insulin will kill them in a hurry and their high glucose levels will kill them in a hurry if they don't take insulin. And if you're running extremely high blood sugar consistently, those glucose levels are damaging your body and your organs every day and you cannot write it off as irrelevant. There are some doctors who are really into restoring insulin sensitivity and sometimes they say, Type 1 diabetes is a problem of not enough insulin. Type 2 diabetes is a problem of too much insulin. Well, that is frequently true. In fact, I'd say it's probably true in 90-some percent of type 2 diabetics. But it's not always true. There are some type 2 diabetics, especially those who've been severely diabetic for many years, who produce very little insulin. They're not yet at the point where they produce no insulin, so they're not technically type 1 diabetics, but they produce very little insulin. So their problem is not a matter of producing too much insulin. And of course, there are insulin tests you can take which will tell you whether this is your situation. Extremely high glucose levels that go on for years can kill off beta cells and make them completely useless and at a certain point, you may not be making much insulin at all. Often, the people doing keto who see the slowest progress have beta cell damage, dysfunction, or death. And they may legitimately need to take insulin or diabetic meds to keep their glucose levels from being constantly sky high and damaging their organs even more than they already have. Again, only your doctor can tell you if this is your case. But let's focus on those whose pancreases are still working well, which is probably the majority of type 2 diabetics. In fact, for many diabetics, their pancreases are working like crazy, doing far more work than they were ever intended to do, desperately trying to keep up with all the donuts and cheesecakes and bread rolls and chips, pizzas, cinnamon rolls, bagels, pretzels, and other junk that keep coming their way. In those cases, which is by far the majority of type 2 diabetics in their early stages at least, the problem is twofold, high glucose levels and high insulin levels. And both are capable of wreaking havoc in your body. High glucose and high insulin levels are a metabolic one-two punch, a series of left-right jabs and hooks to your body that can do immeasurable damage and shorten your life. 
There are two basic approaches to this high glucose slash high insulin problem. One is to give you diabetic medicines and insulin. These could be useful if your pancreas has been compromised. But if your pancreas is working fine, as is the case with so many type 2s, and the problem is insulin resistance, then taking more and more meds and more and more insulin just to lower your numbers on your glucose meter or on your A1C score is not smart. If you refuse to change your diet and your lifestyle and you just say, well, I'm going to take more insulin and some high-powered diabetic meds that are going to squeeze my pancreas and squeeze and squeeze and squeeze out every last drop of insulin it can produce, and then I'll see some better numbers. If that's your attitude, you are totally missing the point. Getting lower glucose numbers that way is cheating, and cheating never benefits the cheater. Imagine a guy who tells you, you don't have to study to pass your algebra class. I have a friend who is an expert in algebra, and for a price, we'll give you a receiver that will fit in your ear and a camera that looks like a button on your shirt. Whenever you take a test, he'll see the questions and he'll tell you the answers. And you decide, hey, that's a great idea. So you never study for the class. You pay no attention to the teacher when they're teaching. And at test time, you ace your test. And then you ace the next test. And at the end of the course, you get an A. Problem is, you don't know a thing about algebra. Have you really done yourself a favor? And the same could be said of the type 2 diabetic who has a perfectly functioning pancreas, but instead of changing his diet and lifestyle, he just keeps taking more and more drugs and insulin. If he can somehow manage to keep from dying of a hypo, he may succeed in lowering his glucose numbers and his A1C, but he hasn't really done himself any favor. Now, in my videos, I do talk about the importance of low insulin levels and restoring insulin sensitivity. But the reason I focus so much on lowering glucose levels is that when you do this the right way, when you slash the carbs in your diet and employ time-restricted eating and maybe some 24 or 36 hour fasts, you will do both. You'll lower your glucose levels and you will be reversing your insulin resistance. Almost all the experts who talk about restoring insulin sensitivity, men like Dr. Jason Fung, Benjamin Bickman, Ivor Cumming, Cummins, Sten Ekberg, and the others, they all say, Insulin resistance comes from hyperinsulinemia, which comes from high glucose, which comes from eating way too many carbs and sugars. And if you were to ask them, what can I do about my insulin resistance? Or to put it in another way, how can I restore insulin sensitivity? <laughs> they will all tell you the same thing. Slash the carbs in your diet, employ time-restricted eating, and do some longer fasts if you are able. It turns out that the natural solution for high glucose is the precise solution for insulin resistance. Well, let's imagine I see my friend at the pharmacy ahead of me and he has heart disease and I have diabetes. After he gets his medication, I get mine and we get to talking afterwards. He shows me the new pill his doctor prescribed. It's a strange, large, orange and green pill called Michael Funkenstein. I take out my pills and they look just like his. They're orange and green and they're called Michael Funkenstein. We find that very odd. The same pills have been prescribed for his heart problem and my diabetes. So we go to the doctor and ask him, why did you prescribe exactly the same pill for both of us when one of us has heart problems and the other has diabetes? Well, the doctor tells us this is a new miracle drug and it fixes both heart disease and diabetes as well. This is precisely the case with high glucose and hyperinsulinemia. The same approach, a low-carb diet and time-restricted eating, work for both. Dr. Benjamin Bickman, one of the top authorities on the dangers of insulin resistance and how it affects so many diseases that we get, writes this, Once we appreciate that too much insulin is a main driver of insulin resistance, the chain of events suggesting a solution is too obvious. Eating fewer carbohydrates equals reduced blood glucose equals reduced blood insulin equals improved insulin sensitivity. With a lowering of insulin comes a sort of resetting, resensitizing of the insulinostat. 
He also writes, carbohydrate can elicit a remarkable increase in insulin, more than 10 times above normal. Dietary fat elicits no insulin effect at all. Thus, a diet that limits the insulin spiker, carbohydrates, especially refined, and increases the insulin dampeners, protein and fat, especially unrefined, is one that should improve insulin sensitivity. And as we will see, it does. Well, there is a good reason why I focus on glucose levels so much. There is no home test which can measure my level of insulin resistance. There's no Bob the Meter or Marsha the Meter or Fred the Meter that specializes in how much insulin is coursing through my body or how truly insulin resistant I am. But there is a meter, a little fella named Mike the Meter, who can tell you in seconds whether your blood sugar is high, medium, or low. And you can bet if your glucose levels are high and you have a pancreas that still works, your insulin levels are very high as well. And this is only going to make your insulin resistance worse and worse and worse. On the other hand, when you cut those carbs and you see your glucose levels dropping every month, <laughs> you're going to get so excited that your motivation is going to go through the roof. So no, I will not always be talking about insulin sensitivity. And when I hear someone who has significantly lowered their A1C or their fasting glucose, you can bet I'm going to praise them and tell them, well done. I know that if they can keep those glucose levels in the normal range through diet and exercise and maybe a little berberine, they're doing the best thing they can possibly do to reverse insulin resistance and restore insulin sensitivity. If you've recently been diagnosed with diabetes and you've just discovered this channel, let me recommend that you go to our uploads page, which will give you access to every diabetic video we've posted since we began. As you work your way through all our videos, I believe you'll find the help you need. A link to our uploads page is in the description.